There's a principle we need to talk about that is widely ignored among leaders, among managers, among people of influence, because it seems to run counter to productivity and quality and excellence. But in fact, the two are inextricably linked. It's a principle called simplicity. And it doesn't mean sitting back and putting your feet up on the couch and doing nothing. No, simplicity means this. And here's a dictionary definition of what we're talking about here. The property, condition, or quality of being simple. That's really helpful, isn't it? <laughs> or uncombined. Or to be focused. This is really the way to think about it. When we talk about simplicity from a leadership perspective, from a management perspective, from an organizational performance perspective, we're talking about focus. We're talking about doing fewer things with more excellence rather than a lot more things at 80%. And you can see that it has other definitions as well. But for our purposes, let's think about simplicity as focus. And this is something that has culminated in competitive advantage for some of the finest companies in the world. For example, when you go to Google's homepage, what do you see? You simply see a box. There's a lot of white space, there's Google's name, and there is a search box. You type in something and instantly you get a whole lot of results. It just works. It's simple. And that's why we keep using it. Apple's product design is another classic example of simplicity. Here's a quote from, from Steve Jobs. It's been one of my mantras, focus and simplicity. Simple can be harder than complex. You have to work hard to get your thinking clean to make it simple. But it's worth it in the end because once you're there, you can move mountains. And you see it with some of their products. The Apple II back in the late 1970s, the best-selling computer of that decade. Why did it sell so well? Because it was all in one box. It had the keyboard and it had the monitor and it just just worked. You plugged in the thing and you didn't have to be an engineer or an expert. Right? And it's the, the product that put them over the top because they simplified it. The iMac, when he came back after his termination, he came back in uh, the late 1990s and he and Johnny Ive and some others built this iMac when people were trying to get onto the internet for the first time. They wanted to take the thing out of the box and just use it and that's what they built. It came in a bunch of different colors, but that wasn't the point. The point was that you take it out of the box, you plug in the power cord, you plug in the, the modem to your, to your phone cord, and you're online. Simple. It works. You know, the iPod and the iPad, they work very simply. You have one button in the front, you press the button, and the thing works. And in fact, when he came back after his termination and saw all the complexity of Apple, and all the different products they had, all the different peripherals, all the different directions they were going, he, he basically said, get rid of all of that. And he drew this two by two on the board. And he said, we're doing this. All right, we got the consumer and we have the professional. It's one axis. And then we have the desktops and we have the portables. And that's the other axis. We are making four products. We're taking all of our resources and we're focusing on making four products, four and only four products. And that's what they did. That's, you know, that's where iMac came from. It was a desktop for, the, for every consumer. That's where iPod came from. It was a portable music playing device for every consumer. We're going to make four things, put all our resources into it and do it as well as possible. We can do a whole lot better than anybody ever did. We're going to put a dent in the universe, basically through simplicity. It's really piggybacking on an idea that, uh, that Peter Drucker had articulated throughout his career, this idea of creative abandonment. You know, Drucker, one of the finest management minds of the 20th century, said that strategy, management, product development, innovation, all of this stuff, it's as much about what you're not going to do as it is about what you are going to do. Most organizations are too complex. They need to divest of a number of things that they're doing, anything that's not mission critical. They need to creatively abandon a number of products, a number of projects, maybe layers of management or what have you. They need to simplify. And in doing so, they can invest more of their resources more deeply and ultimately it'll culminate in better quality and, and a competitive advantage for them. And when it came to churches, he said that churches would be more effective if they got rid of 80% of what they were doing. Just jettisoned 80% of what they were doing and invested all of their resources in the other 20%. You'd have more effectiveness in churches everywhere if they simplified. Right? That was his point. 
Right? This simplicity principle is a pathway to excellence. It's a pathway to performance. It's a pathway to productivity. It may be a pathway even to changing the world if Google and Apple are to be believed. And you see some, uh, some Harvard Business Review articles here for your perusal. Actually, I'd recommend deep study of them because they are, are simply outstanding on this topic of simplicity and why it matters.